Good morning, everyone, on this Tuesday after Epiphany. And uh, during this week, we're going to continue reading from the Office of Readings, uh, their readings for that particular day. And today we have a, um, a piece from uh, St. Hippolytus, and it's entitled Water and Spirit. That Jesus should come and be baptized by John is surely cause for amazement. To think of the infinite river that gladdens the city of God being bathed in a poor little stream of the eternal, the unfathomable fountainhead that gives life to all men being immersed in the shallow waters of the transient world? He who fills all creation, leaving no place devoid of his presence, he who is incomprehensible to the angels and hidden from the sight of man, came to be baptized because it was his will. And behold, the heavens opened, and the voice said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The beloved Father begets love, and spiritual light generates light inaccessible. In his divine nature, he is only he is my only Son, through him, though he was known as the Son of Joseph. This is my beloved son. Though hungry himself, he feeds thousands. Though weary, he refreshes those who labor. He has no place to lay his head, yet holds all creation in his hand. By his passion, inflicted on him by others, he frees us from the passions, unleashed by our own disobedience. By receiving a blow on the cheek, he, reads, he gives the world its liberty. By being pierced in the side, he heals the wound of Adam. I ask you now to pay close attention, for I want to return to that fountain of life and contemplate its healing waters at their source. The father of immortality sent his immortal son and word into the world. He came to us meant to cleanse us with water and the spirit, to give us a new birth that would make our bodies and souls immortal, to breathe into us the spirit of life and arm us with incorruptibility. Now, if he became immortal, we shall also be divine. And if we become divine after rebirth in baptism through water and the Holy Spirit, we shall also be co-heirs with Christ after the resurrection of the dead. Therefore, in the herald's voice, I cry, let peoples of every nation come and receive the immortality that flows from baptism. This is the water that is linked to the spirit, the water that irrigates paradise, makes the earth fertile, gives growth to plants, and brings forth living creatures. In short, this is the water by which a man receives new birth and life, the water in which even Christ was baptized, the water into which the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. Whoever goes down into these waters of rebirth with faith renounces the devil and pledges himself to Christ. He repudiates the enemy and confesses that Christ is God, throws off his servitude, and is raised to fiello status. He comes up from baptism, resplendent as the sun, radiant in his purity. But above all, he comes as a son of God and a co-heir with Christ. To him and to his most holy and life-giving spirit be glory and power now and forever. Amen. Stay safe, folks. Hopefully we see each other soon. Bye now.